Well, thanks for all of you for being here. First of all, just a quick introduction. I'm Daniel. I work with the threat intelligence team with Mandiant. Particularly, we work in everything related to operational technology or industrial control systems. Um, most people here already are super familiar with the, with the term, but in, in case not, because yesterday we were having some, some discussions about that. General, uh, general speaking, everything that uh, corresponds with physical processes powered by engineering and uh, computers, basically. Um, so, first of all, I know that it sounds weird, and actually, I I love like the response that I was getting when, when mentioning hacktivism, and some people were like, "Why hacktivism? Why are you even going to talk about that?" Right? So it sounds kind of old in in general, because when we mention the topic of hacktivism, most often it comes at the, the image from probably ten years ago when when we started seeing this type of like actor that was trying to generate some political change. He was trying to show. Uh, you know, I can go and hack you, I can go and have some power over myself, make a movement, something, whatever, right? And then from there, we had this terrible image that still, if you go and search right now, as you might as well know, you go and look for an image of like a hacktivist, particularly, and sometimes also a hacker, and you either find just the, the black hoodie or you find this guy. Um, however, you know, as, as interesting as it sounds, as, as this nice looking, you know, and bad and terrible, to be honest, the impact from hacktivists historically was not really large, right? I mean, it was maybe, maybe they will DDO as a site. Maybe they will leave a message saying like, look, we're terrible and we're after you. They will leave a video. But to be honest, the impact wasn't that large. However, the reason to bring it back right now is actually related with something we are unfortunately all familiar with, which is the current political landscape, right? In Court, I mean, as this, uh, as a conflict, uh, the invasion in Ukraine started happening recently, uh, we started seeing an uptick in, again, in hacktivists trying to, you know, like push something in favor of saying like, you know, I think this time I, I want to get involved in this, in, in this conflict. I want to do something. I want to show that, that I have, you know, like this, this power, so to speak. And then, uh, we started seeing more activity. However, there are two different types. On the one side, you have things like Hacknet, Killnet, some, some big groups that are actually dubious in like affiliation and whatnot. And then on the other side, you had this, this forgotten group, which was the, the, the people attacking operational technology, industrial control systems, trying to find exposed systems and trying to say and claim, Hey, I went and I blew up this or look, this, uh, facility is not going to work anymore or your systems are going to go down in this uh, paper mill. Those are the ones that we started looking into and we started collecting it as part of our threat intel team. And that's how we came up with, with, with this research. However, the big question in here, and then that's also like why, why the beginning of the talk and whatever, like, like the, the idea of the shredding air hack, it, it's terrible, but I just find it very fun. Um, that is the fact that, you know, similar to the experiment where, where there's a cat in the box and you, you don't know if it's alive or dead until you actually have visibility. Uh, it's the same in here. Basically, we, it is difficult to know what, what the actors actually did, if they actually did something, how bad it is, how, where is it coming from, if the actor is even who they claim they are. And when you start getting together all this uncertainty, it becomes a very interesting puzzle to solve. And that is basically what we're going to be discussing right now. I'm not, unfortunately, I, I tell you right now, I'm not going to come up with a solution. I'm not going to tell you it's the most relevant or it's not. But I'm going to give you enough, um, how to say, enough information so that you can decide by yourselves if this is the most relevant, if it's not, if I should worry about it, if it's a joke, whichever. But uh, I'm going to do it with many anecdotes so that it, it, it has also some some uh, some value in, in, in your lives. So <clears throat> first of all, the, the, the claim that, that happened from last year, 2022, we uh, actually, well, early this year, we published this, this uh, research that was saying hacktivists increasingly claim to target OT. This, however, was not the first time we saw it. It is the evolution of something that we started, that started growing since probably a couple years ago. That was another piece of research we pushed in 2021, where we released this timeline where we're discussing something that we call low sophistication attacks. Low sophistication attacks for OT means this case where the actor normally goes, find a internet exposed OT, goes, modify some parameter, tries to make a change in the system. Uh, oftentimes, uh, well, I'll talk a bit more about like, like techniques they use and whatnot. But um, basically, yeah, we started seeing an uptick in that. But most often, back back then, 
It was cases that had to do with um, opportunistic actors. Basically, I just did it because I can, because it's fun. Uh, we saw others that were kind of like, we do it because we want to sell it. I don't know if someone bought it, but possibly. Um, and then, yeah, we, we started seeing that the actors started not only getting access, like in the past, but also interacting with the process. And in this beginning, we started seeing also like the hacktivists started playing a, a role. It was before the conflict and whatever, but just there were a couple incidents where, where hacktivists would claim I, I went and I exploited something, right? And there's actually, this is just one of the anecdotes for fun. There's a very known case that was um, specifically against uh, Israel. And basically the actors were saying, you know, we hate you, you're terrible. So what we're going to do is we are going to destroy your energy systems. Here you go. Here's an image. This is what we did. Um, first of all, energy systems don't really mean anything. Uh, so second, when we started looking at the, at the panels that they were sharing, we corroborated that it was actually a kitchen. Uh, it was a, a, like an intelligence age back for a kitchen. Uh, we were able to track where in Israel that was and everything. And, you know, it, it was a very fun case, not for the kitchen, but for us. Um, and yeah, I mean, like oh, everything was fixed, uh, notified and whatever. But yeah, you know, like, like that, that's the point. We started seeing there this idea of hacktivist. Also, some other hacktivists that were sharing tutorials that were saying, you know, this is what you have to do. These are the ports you look for. This is the type of uh, technology you look for. These are the vendors you look for. And this is what you can do. So there was this intentionality, but there wasn't yet that drive to start doing something more. And instead, in 2022, as, 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 as with, the, with this uh, research into hacktivism, we started seeing more cases. And then there was this intentionality, and then there was this spike, right? Um, here, just to give some some additional information about, in general, like our sample. So j just to be entirely clear on what you're going to get and where it comes from. Uh, basically, this this is uh, this cloud is made by the type of word wording that we would find in, in their messages that indicated the interest for OT. Uh, for those familiar with OT, you're going to recognize uh, a ton of these ones. Uh, for those not, then now you will. Um, and basically. Well, yeah, we started looking for this type of keyword in their messaging. We started looking at what type of, 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 of things they were doing. And also the other thing to clarify is, of course, this is information that's very difficult to get access to because it can be just posted wherever, sometimes uh, online forums, sometimes it's social, even social media publicly, but it's all over the place. Uh, sometimes to get, it's very complicated to get access in some cases. So the point is, uh, since we have that unique capability, it was very interesting to put it together and try to share a bit into how this looks like. One final note um, is that before talking more about this activity more more in detail is that what do I mean when I mention hacktivist claims? Uh, hacktivist claims, these are two real examples. Actually, they were posted in public social media. This is one of one of the actors that is super, yeah, they just do it very openly. Uh, this one is actually pro, pro Ukraine. Um, it was, it, it's been trying to do compromises in, in, in Russia in general. And as you can tell here, for example, this is the type of OT, uh, compromise that we see where what they did, they, they go, they find panels, uh, of different types of processes, trying to interpret what the process is. And, and these, uh, people particularly have been very good at, at, at showing that they know what they're doing, that they are doing the research that they are understanding from there to an impact. There's still more to discuss, but at least, you know, you can see that there is interest and they are finding it as something, something valuable. Oh, sorry. And just for the name, Tim One Fist is, well, is, is a name. It's, it's already there. But in case you're curious, you're going to find more, more publicly available information. And, and, and also an alert that, that is basically that when you're going to see some of these claims, oftentimes, like you, you never know. Sometimes there, there is some reality and, and you have to go and do pretty much a ton of research into that, mostly OSINT. Uh, but sometimes also it's, it's, Seems like it smells fairly inaccurate. This is, for example, a real case. Uh, one of those prolific activist actors that said, you know, we went, we did this explosion. Uh, but then when we, when you start looking more into the, those explosions, actually, there is some attribution not to an actor, but to an accident that happened in a different location. Or, you know, like when you, we also have to look at the real incident where it takes place and if there is anything, anything, any way to know. However, from an OT perspective, even if it was real, validating such an incident would be super hard because you need to involve uh, basically a ton of engineers and then you have to involve the computing side, basically analyze how the process worked, what was the problem with the process, if there had anything to do with the computer, and most likely your equipment is damaged, so it's not going to be easy. So having this this context of, of like like the hacktivism and, and, and OT and whatnot, 
I'm going to try to bring a bit more now of the facts of what we're actually seeing and, and, and to, to, to discuss and, and determine if this is, you know, something we should be worried about, concerned, what is actually happening. So the first thing, in, in fact, I, I prefer placing the boring facts first. So the most boring one, which is the techniques they use, actually. Um, this is this is a mapping based on MITRE ATT&CK for ICS, the specific matrix that they have, and like, like, like with similar parallel techniques. And basically what we analyze, like what you can see in here is, is a summary of the most common ones we're observing from hacktivists. Uh, definitely very different from what we see from, from big hardcore OT cyber physical attacks. Um, but basically what you see here is, is, is a pattern. In general, initial access is going to be by exposed, exposed, uh, uh, basically anything exposed to the internet. Uh, most of it can be with platforms such as Shodan, Tensis, whatever. If you want to talk earlier, they mentioned something like that. Oftentimes it could also be just, you know, like basically what, whichever type of tooling you can use. Um, the second thing is normally the exploit. There are two types. There are a couple that have started doing a bit more complex cases where I mean, a complex, like, like using uh, modules from, from, op op I'm not going to say open source, but basically like publicly available tools such as, you know, Metasploit modules for OT protocols and things like that. Those are a few, but most often it is a graphical interface. So most often they just go and find what we name, you know, to the HMI, human machine interface. And then basically once you have access, you can go and click. It doesn't mean that the system is going to respond. It depends on many things. And it doesn't mean that there is no safety mechanism. Maybe there is. Normally there is. But you know, there, that, that's as much as we can tell based on the, on the evidence they show. Then from there, it's very often that they're using valid accounts. Uh, there's normally not a lot of complexity in these type of compromises, um, which makes it also, on the one hand, better because it's, it sounds less concerning. On the one hand, on, on the other hand, it's it's worse because if they're happening and happening, it means that you know we, we still find those type of loopholes, um, which is very common for OT. And then, yeah, fi finally, um, I think the, the interesting thing here on, on the impact, what you're going to see here mostly, sounds actually pretty mild when you just say it like manipulation of control, loss of availability. But when you actually think about what that means from an OT perspective, from a safety perspective, manipulation of controls mean uh, you have a physical process that is operated by these machines, you modify a parameter, and then the, the, the organization that has control over this process has to modify and go and figure out what happened with their process. This process could be anything from production of uh, in a manufacturing facility, but it could be also energy, it could be water. Uh, water facilities especially are normally very weak in security because they don't have a ton of, of, of money to bring like like security people basically. So that is the reason that, that is one of the reasons that make it kind of like like concerning, uh, even though the compromises are not per se complex. Um, to exemplify some of these uh, big uh, let's say big big techniques, the first thing is this is an alert uh, real from 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 CISA from in, in the US. Uh, basically. It is very, what I found the most fun about this alert is they just said, uh, actors are targeting UPS, um, uh, basically it's like power backups. Uh, so we recommend you to disconnect them from the internet. And that was all like, that, like a line. So like, okay, well, thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, what's interesting in here is that they put out this advisory shortly around the time span when the other team that I showed you a second, uh, a couple of minutes ago, team one fist, they actually claim to be compromising UPS. Whether it's related or not, who knows, but it shows that, you know, some actor finds something, they start sharing it, others realize that is a thing, that is a concept that they probably weren't familiar with or a query that they can do, and then you, you start seeing this kind of like transfer of knowledge. To show the graphical interface portion, which normally is much more attractive than just the, 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 the command line, I don't know if you're familiar with this, this type of, of images. This is what we call the, the human machine interface, and it's basically, it can be processed as complex and weird or as uh, simple and, and non-relevant. Uh, it depends. We see a ton of these ones uh, put out by, by, by low sophistication actors. Uh, some of the panels that you see here don't even say that much because it's actually a, a, logic, a programmable controller, basically engineering equipment to go and fulfill a, a physical process. Um, and yeah, so, so part, of, part of the job we do is also is like whenever we see these claims, we go and try to validate what actually happened, if there is any concern, or if it, if it wasn't. In some, I insist, it could be super concerning. In some others, not really. Like, for example, another, another phone case that we had, well, actually, was uh, an actor saying we compromise rail systems, basically trains. Um, and then they showed the image from, from the control. 
And then after doing some research and due diligence, we realized it was, it was a train. It was just like a model train. So probably, you know, it was, it was kind of like Ant-Man, you know, it's like falls around for those who watch, <laughs> watch the, the movie. But yeah. So, um, anyway, so, so it depends. It, it can be very concerning or it can just not. And the most interesting for like, like for this year and like in most relevant, sorry, recent cases that we hadn't, we, we didn't used to see this before. We used to see the, the, the exposed uh, systems, but we didn't, we were not used to seeing these actors using anything more, more interesting. And in this case, they had uh, two things. One of them is uh, they were using some Metasploit modules. Uh, if you're familiar, those three are specific protocols that you use in OT. Um, they're, they're very common and, and, and most often fairly insecure. IEC 104 might sound even like probably not give you a lot of information, but if you're familiar with, with the big OT malware cases, which there are only like eight in history, um, like at least well known, uh, in destroyer, in destroyer version two, both of them deployed in Ukraine to turn off power lights. Um, one of them successful, the other one, uh, possibly, possibly not. And then cosmic energy, uh, the last, OT malware that we actually, our team just, just published, I think like two days ago, uh, the, a blog about that. All of those were, were basically using IEC 104 because it, it's really used mainly in, in European, uh, facilities for energy. Um, and Killbus, there was also like, like a specific tool that they did for themselves. Um, this was also Modbus. Uh, Modbus is also a very common, one of the most common OT protocols. And again, what we were seeing here is uh, they were just like searching for devices, trying to go, trying to do these modifications. And the most interesting thing is here, there was not even like, like a panel or an image that would tell you what happened, You, which you simply don't know. They just like found devices and maybe they just tripped some devices around and that's it. I mean, there should be some way to verify, but it's going to be very tricky. Um, so yeah, we saw that. And the other interesting here is we didn't see it from just one group. After one group did it, we started seeing other groups using the same tool and the same tool and the same tool. The same with vulnerabilities. For example, there's this, um, there was this device, uh, fairly used in Israel, uh, that it, that was basically for HVAC and, and, um, how do you say that? Basically like, like, yeah, building automation. Uh, and then one actor found that there was a vulnerability from 2016 in that device. They started exploring remotely. So he started finding more. And then you saw one, two, three, four, many actors starting to reproduce that same vulnerability against all the devices from this company. So, and, and you know, even though it, it was fairly old. So that was something very interesting that we're seeing, basically actors starting to, to use more of this tooling um, and moving away from only the, the, the uh, poking what's, what's online. And so what's, what's the impact? Because here's the question. And also, I really apologize for this cat. I promise it was a normal horizontal cat. But then I had to move the presentation a couple of times and I just couldn't fix it anymore. And that's what you see that thing. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so what's the impact? You know, like, cause I, I, I believe and, and I'm aware that, that painting this picture, it's a bit difficult. Cause on the one hand, I say it's very concerning. On the one, on the other, I say, ah, uh, you know, really it's not that bad. So I think that it makes a bit of sense to describe, uh, what the impact could be, how it could be, how it could look like. And for that, I decided to bring Three cases, just like discuss, um, three, three cases we had researched that are fairly interesting. The last one is my favorite. I will get there. Um, but so let's, let's debunk some of the, some OT hacking claims. Um, first of all, the first one, ghost tech. I don't know. Did, did anyone hear about this? It was like earlier this year around January, February. Did you ever hear about ghost tech ransomware RTU? Does it ring a bell for anyone? Then great, because then it's even more interesting. So um, basically, around we yeah, have actually January this year, there was this uh, uh, case that made it made it big to news, mainly for for OT people and whatnot, and it was super discussed. And what happened is just an actor, Ghost Tech, uh, posted on social media saying, you know, we just deployed ransomware in a remote terminal unit. Okay, what does that mean? Remote terminal unit is an automation device. Basically, uh, it's mainly used in energy. And then you use, use it to control interaction with other different devices. This is something that, that's basically, uh, for, well, it can work in different uh, auto automation industries, but for example, a lot in energy. And it is basically the score to how a physical process works and how you, you're going to receive the service. 
Um, but it's also fairly specific. Normally, when you're talking about an RTU, it runs on something in something that's called RTOS, Real Time Operating System. So it's not something that you can just go and ransomware like Microsoft or Linux or whatever. Oftentimes they are proprietary. They might be even made by by the own vendor. They're fairly obscure. Um, so by by claiming by getting an activist claiming that they had done this ransomware on an RTU was something fairly fairly new. It was like okay. If you did that, you would be the first one. It wouldn't be a researcher. It wouldn't be a security. It would, it would be a hacktivist. Now, the problem is, uh, that they also shared evidence because they want the credibility and they, they are really trying hard, you know? Uh, what they are doing is, is, is for real. And the problem is they were searching for ITU and there was a knowledge and there was intentionality. But basically, once they started sharing the evidence and we were able to go and verify what had actually happened, the picture was slightly different. Um, this one, I do believe it was an honest mistake. So at least it wasn't like in other cases where they are kind of exaggerating. This one, um, what you see here is basically the evidence from, from, from the actor, what, what they offered. Uh, and then I don't know if you see down there, it says a build for RTU, blah, blah, blah. It says RTU, but it does not mean it's a remote terminal unit. It's just a name of a different product that's called RTU. Uh, and then, so actually this was a router. Uh, so we started looking. It was a, a router. It, it's more like similar to um, to a Raspberry Pi in this case. We would say kind of like in capabilities. Um, in their defense, it is used sometimes allegedly by the vendor for OT, but you know it's not really like 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 a big deal. And as you can tell, if you recognize some of the of the commands in there, well, not not commands, basically the the, the names in there, it is um, it is in Linux. So. Basically, what they found was, yeah, an RTU, but an RTU that meant something entirely different, had nothing to do with OT, was much less concerning. Uh, and yet, it caught a lot of attention. And one week, it was, look, hacktivists are going to destroy the world. The next week, it was like, look, okay, maybe not. Maybe it wasn't real. You know, like, yes, but no. Um, and yeah, I mean, like, of course, you, you can see here, like, like also, they showed that at least they did encrypt something with, a, you know, very interesting uh, file extensions. But... Um, Anyway, that, that, that was the first one. And, and, and I think that that was fairly relevant from an OT standpoint because it would have been like really something big if that happened. The, the second case, uh, this, this is actually not one single case, but it's actually multiple. And it's more like something we, we, we have observed fairly often. That is when the hacktivist claims that one of their attacks resulted in physical damage somewhere else. So sometimes it is difficult to know if they're taking advantage of that and just saying it. Some, it's difficult to, to know if they believe it. Maybe it's just to call attention because in the end, from an activist standpoint, what you want is to call media attention, people's attention to your cause, right? So, you know, the attack is being effective in that sense. It just goes out and it's something we see. Um, and yeah, th these uh, three cases, for example, they all claimed, they said, yes, there was this explosion and it was me. Is it true? Is it not? Most likely it's not based on the complexity that you need to make one of those things happen. It, it is possible. And we've seen nation states doing those type of attacks. Um, but not specifically like, like as a, as a single hacktivist group that, that normally would not have those capabilities. Um, and interesting in here, for example, like in the third case here, the one from Team One Fist, that case we were able actually to, to validate. There was public information claiming that, that the explosion had resulted from uh, basically a technical error in a different facility in a very different location. And then eventually, you know, just basically just, uh, it, it was entirely unrelated to the hackers, but in other cases, it's difficult to tell. Was it them? Was it not? Most likely not, but you know, it's up for someone to validate. Um, the third one is my favorite though. This is the case that actually I, I'm going to ask again, just for, for the fun, but is any one of you familiar with, with predatory sparrow? It was. I think late last year. Then again, I'm very happy because then I'll bring it up. Um, so predatory sparrow is, is, is a very interesting case. It was, it was an actor that, that appeared, um, basically, yeah, already like, like last, last year, uh, a bit earlier. And what they did actually in the beginning, it was a ton of compromises against Iran, basically like things in Iran. It was a television uh, channel. It was, uh, gas pumps, uh, this one, uh, basically that's uh, still manufacturing, uh, and I'm missing one, but anyway, there were like, like four critical infrastructure cases. Um, one of them was actually very fun because like in the gas pumps, what they did was they switched the message and they added there a hotline from, from, from the Supreme leader, let's say. So like, if you see that you couldn't go and pay for your gas, you, you would be flooding their, 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 their hotline. So it, it that was a fun thing they, 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 they added. But anyway, the point in here is, um, these guys, 
they have something particular because they do claim to be hacktivists. They behave like hacktivists. Everything seems hacktivist. But actually, they have some things that no other hacktivist has or are not really common, like basically complex malware families that they create for themselves. Uh, we call them Meteor and Meteorlite, both of them used in these these and cases and sort of related to these events that, I, that I'm, I'm going to discuss right now. What they claimed was that they generated, basically, they were able to damage, uh, still physically damage, uh, steel uh, facility, a steel production facility. And what they share for evidence was the following. On the left, uh, on the top, what you see is a, a, a video of the furnace. It's like, um, I think like five minutes of video. You see it from normal, how it starts. Basically, that's when it starts falling. Eventually, there's the explosion. Um, it is interesting because on the one hand, one can say just like, you know, it's just a video. But obviously, we did try to go and validate. We did try to find maybe they reused it from somewhere. Maybe it was like fake generated. Maybe we tried all those approaches and it didn't seem like. Uh, it may be that it happened, maybe that not. Obviously, from, from, from Iranian authorities, they came back and said, this is a lie. Nothing happened to us. Nothing has ever happened to us. But also, it's not like we're going to be able to go and validate, right? Uh, it's not like just going a cup, coffee shot or anything. Um, so in, in this case, for example, there's the, the big belief of like, is there a risk? Is it possible? It is possible that, that this happened. They also shared this, um, again, human machine interface that does have the information from, from the organization. Um, and yeah, I mean, so, so, so the, the trick in here is there seems to be feasibility in the case, uh, happening. But that also brings different questions, right? Like, like, for example, um, when you discuss about hacktivists, does that mean that the hacktivist is, is, is like really just an individual trying to operate out of ideology and doing something? Might it be that it is a government? For example, there are some theories that say this is a specific government because of the conflicts in there. Um, might it be that that it's not a government, but it has the support, such as in 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 recently we we've seen a group called uh, Killnet and Hacknet, and both of them, for example, operate in very close timing proximity to deployment of wipers from from Russia in Ukraine. So, for example, there are we seeing collaboration, or are we seeing a government saying, you know, you can do this, no one's going to say anything, this is is in public social media, then you know maybe we can also do it, and then. No one's going to say anything or no one's going to do anything because they can't even validate. So actually that is, that is, this is one of the, of the things that I consider very, very relevant. And just to, to finish the case, because I, I mean, it makes sense to give the full story. Um, the actor also claimed, uh, responsibility, uh, for basically when, when they saw that, that researchers were pushing back and saying like, Hey, I can't really validate. They tried to go one step further and do more and say like, okay, look, here are a bunch of files from the three factories that I compromised, this is all their engineering documentation, which normally is very relevant for planning an OT attack. From our perspective, though, we analyze those documents. They do seem to belong to organizations. So probably, yeah, they compromise at least some file, some email servers. Um, but didn't, it didn't seem like the type of document, like, for example, our red teamers would, would use to do an OT attack uh, or that we've seen from other actors stealing. So was it, was it not? It's basically a bit tricky. So... Let me see. Yeah, I'm good. So, um, I, I guess after giving like all this, this, uh, information on the cases, I think the, the, the big points and what I promised was to respond, uh, if this is something that actually we should be concerned about or not, because like you see the type of target is very relevant for your life, is physical, is well not. And yes, there is a connection and there is a possibility of doing an attack. But the question in here is, are, are the, is the attack coming from the hacktivists, the one that's really, we should be really concerned about, right? And for this, I mean, as I said, I don't have a response, yes and no, uh, but I'm going to give you the summary for both both arguments so that you can you can make your decision. On, on, the, on the yes side, first of all, hacktivists do interact with OT assets. They are finding the exposed assets. They are using these different uh, modules, exploit modules that become increasingly available. People are getting more familiar with the protocols, with how it works, with what it means. And, you know, that is something that is just simply a fact. We are seeing it. Um, the second thing is higher frequency means higher risk. So theoretically, you know, like, like when we go to, through, through, through the equation, if we're seeing more, more, more cases, it is more probable that it's something that can happen to you if you have something exposed. Most often we expect that would impact smaller organizations rather than the large ones that have a lot of security. But still, you know, like as I said earlier, uh, water facilities play within those smaller organizations, for example. You know, it's, there, there's a lot like 
there's a lot to figure out in there from from critical infrastructure perspective. Uh, third one calls media attention. Basically, the more it is reproduced in media, uh, how it's seen and whatever, it is good because there's awareness, but there's always this challenge that also there might be copycats, others doing it, normalizing the case. It's okay. You can go and say you hacked something, you blew up something, but you know, no one's going to do anything, right? Because it's, you can't prove it. The fourth one is, uh, it might help nation states to deny actions, such as the case of uh, Hacknet and Killnet, or such as the case possibly, well, possibly Hacknet and Killnet, or possibly with uh, Predatory Sparrow. It is basically what we call plausible deniability, that, that the state can do something and then, you know, just say, it wasn't me, it was a hacktivist. So it provides the tool. And lastly, the share of knowledge, basically, that right now we're seeing this, this trend grow over the conflict. But then the question is, what's going to happen hopefully soon, when the conflict is done. Are we going to see these guys still doing something? Are we still going to see hacktivism becoming a consistent problem? Or is it going to be like the last time when there was something, it caught attention, and then it just went dormant for, for a long period of time? There's poses for the no on the other side is uh, basically the techniques they use are very simple. Yes, we're, you're, you're, I'm definitely not talking about an APT grade type of event. I'm not talking about uh, not even ransomware that right now can get pretty complicated. I'm talking just about the hacktivism, the hacktivist attacks that most often could be reproduced by just looking at, at, a, at a couple set of instructions and having some general knowledge. The second one, uh, higher frequency does not mean higher impact. That is true. So even though theoretically the risk is higher, it does not mean that they have, that they are normally causing big impacts. So in most of the cases, it's different. It's, it's even difficult to tell if they did something or not or what is the implication. Attacks require more resources to generate impact. In general, for OT, if you really want to go and generate one of those explosions that they said, it's not that easy. You do need to develop more complex malware. You do need to be very familiar with the cases. We've seen a lot recently, for example, from, from the, in the conflict in Ukraine, uh, about like, like growth in capabilities from nation states, uh, Polish blogs about that and whatnot. But, you know, those are big teams that are working with this, uh, in conjunction, engineering, computing and, and, and whatnot, right? Um, hacktivists can call me attention without a team. Yeah. As long as it's something flashy, it does not need to destroy something. So probably it's going to be a passing trend. And then lastly, uh, nation states have hacked OT with little to no repercussions in the past. So it's, if you've seen, if you follow the, the, the past OT cases, most of them have never gotten any consequences for, for, for the people conducting them. Uh, there are a couple, for example, um, of indictments in, in, in the U S for the case of Triton, uh, 2017 Middle East. Uh, there's indictments for, you know, like, like for a sandworm team, which is one associated with Indestroyer and whatever. Uh, but in general, most of these cases just, you know, it's difficult as a state to define what action you're going to take, um, for multiple reasons. So that being said, um, yeah, I think that's, that's everything I have. My personal opinion is, uh, we're going to continue seeing this at least through the time of the conflict. Given the geopolitical situation, most likely it's going to probably go a bit forward. Uh, the more complex the political situation is, the most likely you're going to see this type of attacks. And the fact that we see these type of actors using more tools, uh, trying to, to find different approaches, I do think it's concerning. And I do think it's something at least worth keeping in, in track. Because otherwise, my concern is that if no one's looking at it, that they, that it, they actually achieve something interesting, no one's going to know. And everyone's going to say, like, it's normal. You know, they, they've been doing it. it. That's all. Um, but instead, if we keep a track on that, we might be able to, 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 basically respond if we see uh, this type of escalation from actors that are less complicated. It's already a big problem with nation states, a big problem with criminals. I just hope it doesn't get to be a problem with uh, with hacktivists as well. And yeah, that's all on my side. Uh, yeah, thanks for everything. And I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, th I think we have like like a couple of minutes. So if, if anyone has... Uh, okay, yep. Well, it, it depends. Ah, okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm going to repeat the question. So, so he was basically asking, like, like if if uh, the use of nation states of, of, of these type of hacktivist operations is basically like 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 a benefit or a hindrance, right? Like, basically. Does it help covert operations or Okay. Does it help covert operations or does it hinder covert operations? So it it depends. I would say, like, like I mean. 
this is not the first time that we've seen a uh, nation state actually like like cooperating at the the hacktivist level. So it definitely can help if depending on the objective. That that's a summary. If your objective is basically to call attention to something that's happening, to show that there's a capability, for example, uh, for psychological operations, if you're trying to, for example, damage the uh, in Ukraine, for example, let's get the people, the psyche, let's get it down, and let's show that everything that's going on in there, that everything we can destroy, then probably it's a it's something good. Uh, however, it's definitely going to be going to hinder it as well if what they're trying to to do is just keep it secret. But most likely, I, I would assume that you just wouldn't use the type, this type of technique if you wanted to really do something covered. So, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Any other questions? Not? Okay. I think then we can just... I think we're good? Okay. Cool. Thank you.